Mm -hmm. uh, go Wasting ahead, no time. On your side. Also, don't pick. Uh, don't pick until like the last second. Okay, so okay, on my side we have Kennen, Jaina as support, Scion, Scion running teleport flash. Uh, not entirely sure if he'll be going AD or AP. Um, Nocturne as the jungle, and Ezreal on like WTF as their AD carry. I, I really like to pronounce his name, like WTF. I don't know why it's very obnoxious. Who is on the curse side? We do have. Uh, Swain, Galio, Soraka, Kogma, as well as Udir. So Udir is going to be out in the jungle right now. He does have uh, Sidko is going to be running that for us. Double lift on Kogma, and uh, Swain is going to be NY Jackie. Pull Belter running Galio. That's um. I know Pull Belter is really a big fan of Vigar and AP, but he's going to be running Galio here for us. So a little bit more of a tanky aspect. Liquid 112 is going to be running on the Soraka. So instead of uh, any kind of shenanigans there, I do not know what the bands are, but uh, that is what we're going to be running. So get your bunny suit Teemo ready, because we got this next game rolling and ready to go. Bunny Teemo is totally ready. Look how happy he is to see that we are in-game. I'm really curious as to what Trick is going to do with Scion. Not something I see in competitive games. In fact, not something I see in any game ever, really. Scion has been out of favor for a bit. I... Aww, I'm sad that Doublelift is not using the Chinese, uh, Kog'Maw. But he is using the Butterfly one, which is perfectly okay. Uh, I sure haven't seen is. him play Kog'Maw, actually. I'm really curious as to what he plans to do with it. Of course, the uh, ultimate on Kog'Maw is super deadly, and RTD, I'm sure, is really looking forward to doing a lot of Kog'Maw juking. Mm -hmm. Nice uh, skinning to win and going out to everyone there. And Lumberjack Scion. Yeah, Scion not going to be the jungle. It is going to be Nocturne, so that means we're going to have a lane Scion. And at that point, you gotta wonder, AP or AD? I actually played with an AD Scion the other day who was very passionate about it, but at the same time, um, wasn't very useful to us. Is this Teemo good? <laughs> I don't know. Are you any good? Oh, I am the proest of pro Teemos. Better than Rayman has ever been. <laughs> sure, alright. Uh, are we remaking? Apparently Summoner Switch. I don't know what they, they're talking about there, but Telly greater than Ignite, who knows? I don't know, but Sidco, he's going to be coming here with the Cog, it looks like they're going to be protecting their blue right off the bat. And uh, right now we only got Chunky out there, Kennen out in the lane. Are we going to be remaking? They're debating uh, remaking the game since there were some summoner spell changes from last time. But I think they're going to just save themselves the time. In the meantime, Curse is actually going for a level 1... Uh, Potentially level one fight, they are going to actually ward and try to steal wraiths from roll the dice. Um, do you think we would be? Hmm. They're debating whether or not they are allowed to switch summoner spells uh, from the last game, since this is a replay of the last game, which was unfortunately trolled. I don't think we are going to remake the game, however, since it is taking quite a while. I don't have any notes here from admins, so I think as long as the teams are okay with it, should be fine. Sidgo doesn't look too too worried about it, so I think it, I think we'll be fine to go on this. It's K, yeah, it's like gameplay. Okay. Like it's K. Yeah, I'm going no to go ahead and let Curse decide that, and they are going to just save themselves the time, not worry too much about the summoner spell changes. All right, so good luck. Have fun. We are going to get this rolling here, guys. Scion actually going to be blowing up here on the race, help out this Nocturne a little bit, and that, that's going to accelerate his jungling a bit. But he is going to start at the race, maybe even going to get some help here with the red. Scion is sticking around still, but we do got Udir starting off at that blue. Galio is now going to be heading up top as well as Scion. Yep, Scion is actually going to help him out with the leashing here on the red, so that's going to be totally great for a roll of die. It's going to be accelerating that jungle when we do got the blue down here from Sidco and Kogma is going to be down south with that Soraka up against the Janna Ezreal combo. I'm a big fan of Ezreal players. Um, a lot of the time though you do like to see him go like solo mid but at this point you know, I'm quite okay with him down there in the bottom. Look at this Nocturne up top. Uh, I would like to mention that Sun is in fact going AP. Um, obviously he did get his uh, shield AoE first which he would never actually do on an AD Scion, so definitely an AP Scion, looking forward to it. 
lots and lots of burst damage going to uh wow he actually takes a lot of damage trying to pop his shield on that galio and yeah. really doesn't get a, a do much damage since galio is pretty much like an anti-mage that is not going to be the best lane for ap scion up top in the meantime i really like the uh Janna Ezreal combo actually because and I play a lot of Janna and when you actually get a successful WQ combo off Ezreal can just burst so much on a champion. They Go to both town, have so their to bushes warded because they are very cautious of the support CCing. But so far Ezreal Jaina are not doing very well because they don't have the heal to sustain. Now Paul Belcher is getting ganked up top with this red buff Nocturne, not even a blue. The fear is going to go off with the exhaust. We already got that flash down. The stun coming to come out here from Scion. That's going to be the first blood part of the cheese pirate. Scion Nocturne are like the bestest buddies. They help each other out in jungle and gank immediately. They're doing, having a lot of success with that. Seems to be a good partnership. Looking forward to more action. Definitely goes against a little bit of what you kind of expect as the norm from a jungling. You know, as you start off with that blue, you go all over to your wolves, your raids, you get your red. But no, these guys started immediately with the raids, got the level 2 from the red, and then used it to a great degree for that gank. So the first kill going to roll the dice, and that will put Sign in a, hopefully a little bit more of a better position in terms of his farm. Right, it is... Um, I... Bottom lane mm -hmm. is going to be very, very tricky because they don't have any kind of sustain, and Kogma Soraka is going to be an awful lot of poking. So I expect this Azrael to pick up maybe a Vamp Scepter and some kind of other, uh, some kind of sustain mechanic, possibly even a uh, Rickles actually. Hmm, Sidko has actually come up top to visit that Scion. Uh, no wriggles for him quite yet, but Scion, of course, popping that shield is not going to blow up on anyone at all. So just a little bit of a love tap. Going to be trying to bring Galio back into the fray as he is down, of course, you know, a good amount of farm from his escapades with Nocturne. I am surprised that they not did, did not actually ban Nocturne from the jungle. He is one of the best junglers, him and Lisa, and known for their very good level 2 ganks. Or at least in probably the best level 2 ganker in the entire game. Mm, maybe when, uh, maybe if they get aced or something, I'll ask them what their bans were. It's just, I don't want to bother them at this point, right, so I'll just I let them play it out. We should bother them at all, uh, since this is kind of for a lot of money on the line. This is actually a uh, quarterfinal game, and making it into the semifinals means there will be a minimum of some uh, riot point prizing. Oh yeah, this is still a quarter quarter final game going on, yeah, because it, it will be the best one. If Curse can win this, they will of course move on to the semis, but it, it's going to be a lot for Roll the Dice, you know, it's going to be on their shoulders to make this happen. So in terms of farm, what's everybody doing as I'm keeping an eye here on the Nocturne mid? Uh, pretty even so far, everyone at pretty much the maximum amount of farm you can get, very few missed CS. Um, of course, I expect missed CS top since there's just been so much action. Sana is doing a great job. Hasn't actually picked up in rage. It's going to go purely uh, Q and W. He should still pick up a lot of farm, especially with his uh, AoE W soon. Maybe he just missed one. Not a huge deal. Swain in the meantime possibly being ganked by Nocturne, but does back out with plenty of time to spare. Nocturne might actually get sandwiched right now between Uter and Swain. He's in a bit of trouble. Yeah, Swain does miss. Goes out. Oh, that was a fantastic ult from Kennen. Already level 6. Uter just gets melted. And Swain no. actually gets picked off! Beautiful play there by the cheese fire. 2 for 0 there in the mid. Nocturne, not even 6 with that ult, but Kennen bringing the pain. He has 35 ability power with 0 AP items, so his runes really coming into effect there. That's why they threw him into that mid. So this is now down 0-3. For curse and uh, really the only people that haven't died yet on their team is this bottom lane although look how far back they are have been pushed this Ezreal Janna combo doing some good things now we will be seeing six here soon from double lift maybe we'll be able to push that back with some of those artillery hits that uh, he's very well known for but at this point big early game advantage going to roll the dice I am pretty surprised that Curse is down 0-3 uh, to three at this point in the game. Of course, Roll the Dice, a very, very good team. I wonder if that's how it played out last time. In the meantime, Scion at top actually really did put a lot of work in on Gali and was forced to recall. Um, Swain actually getting blue buff, but Kennen intercepting it, trying to steal it. 
Oh. Actually does steal it. Wow. Kenneth is going to have a massive advantage there. I can't imagine Swain is remotely happy about that. Or even Udir either, but... Wow, Kennen already 7 minute Hexec Revolver. Good luck getting him out of that lane, especially with a red and a blue under his belt. He, he should actually be skyrocketing very quickly here in the farm simply because of these buffs, but he is going to have a lot of harass available to him, and good luck trying to get him out of that lane one-on-one. -on -one. Now, Plabelter upstairs, he is 6, has that Catalyst under his belt, and uh, does look like maybe Scion is going to come mid or just hang out, maybe go back to town. Not too sure where exactly he thinks he's going. So double lift is somewhat winning his lane, poking a lot, uh, you know, constantly getting those heals in the mana. He does have level 6 now, so he is going to start dropping bombs all over the place, and the rest of the lane phase will just be a lot of dancing from bottom. But uh, Roll the Dice is winning mid lane. Kennen is slightly ahead of Swain, Sion slightly ahead of Galio, due to really nice ganks on uh, Roll the Dice's team. Nocturne has played very, very well. We got a CV going out from Soraka and into the top jungle, found it, but and unfortunately Nocturne's not there. He is level 7 with the red buff and a wriggle. Has some wards as well, but I do not know if Curse can actually see him. Look at this, Kennen, however, coming down here, noticing that we are, are missing those golems, and this could be a four-man gank as soon as Nocturne activates that ult, and of course you have Nocturne right, on your Kennen team. Kennen goes in and ults immediately. Soraka is going to get picked off. Actually, flashes out heals, but I don't know if it'll be enough after he's part of the hurricane. Yeah, Nocturne does ult and continues to just die of the tower on double lift. This is a really well coordinated gank. Nocturne is going to die to the tower, however. Two for two. As a 4 on 2 situation, I think actually Curse came out ahead on that one simply because they took 4 on 2 and were able to take out 2 of them with them. So at that point, I mean, Cannon was gone from mid for quite a while. I mean, he came down through the jungle at a very kind of weird route. I guess he was looking for Udir and thought maybe he could take him. So they should have had some kind of warning about that. And Nocturne, however, I think he waited a little bit too long on his ult. Maybe just wasn't in position, but he did pay for that. If they weren't, if he had ulted them a little bit earlier and they weren't in the tower range, might have gone a different story. Definitely, but that was a very much needed gank since, of course, uh, Double Lift is crazy good on his Kog'Maw. And with the amount of poking he was about to do, uh, bottom lane was not feeling safe. Especially since they were pushed up so far. Of course, they definitely didn't expect a 4v2 gank to end like that. And Kog'Maw is actually going to come out a little bit ahead. Uh, he is 2-1-0 and zero with 71 CS. Of course, Ezreal is actually dead even with him at 71. But he does have those two kills under his belt. Wow! Um, okay, double lifts first item straight out the bat for his first time going home. It's gonna be a wit's end. Really going super offensive. <laughs> yeah, they've been. Well, of course, it's a slightly defensive item as he is gonna be able to get continuous hits at his uh, high range and just stack up MR uh, so that this Ezreal's pokes be a lot less effective. You can really see bottom lane getting super poked here as Jaina's shields are a little bit late, actually. I'm just kind of really impressed with the thought process that goes into that. I mean, double lift, a thought of an item that will A, increase his attack speed, B, give him some resistance to the poking mechanisms that is afforded by that Ezreal, and C, just do a ton of damage with that range. It's really, like, I'm not sure I would have done that myself. Usually you do like to see those gun blades instead. But, uh, yeah, uh, Wit's End uh, should do him some good work. Now, we do got Cheese Pirate down here. Ezreal did go to town, and we did see uh, Kennen come down south for at least a little bit, although he has now returned to lane, and I guess Galio chased off Scion at some point, because Scion has gone back, has himself a Sheen and a Blasting Wand. I feel like Roll the Dice is really trying to be aggressive on double lift, and it's just never a good idea because they go in, they poke him a few times, Soraka heals him up, but they realize they can't kill him, turn around, and get poked by double lift and to like one third health on the way back. Like it's happened to Jaina, it's happened to Nocturne. They should really just learn their lesson. Uh, he is actually going to give blue buff to Ezreal, so Ezreal can afford to like the influence of his own in the meantime. Uh, gank on mid, but Kennen does flash out and escape. Hmm, Udir is going to have to just wander on over. Not too sure where he wants to go there, because there's no blue there. But Nocturne back in town, picks himself up a heart of gold. Still the tier 1 boots, but with his ultimate, I mean, for the ganking purposes, as long as he can get into the fray, it should be fine. And, uh, yeah, just taking a look around. we got a Philostone here on the Janna. And a Wriggles 
finish up here on Roll the Dice for Ezreal. So that makes uh, two Wriggles on their team. And none actually here on Curse. It could actually work out really well for the Dragon. Some crazy mind games at bottom because ever because uh, Ezreal is predicting that Soraka will juke and Soraka predicts that he will predict he will juke. And you never know anymore. Ezreal actually flashes out of a big Kog'Maw uh, ult. Still takes a lot of damage however and he is going to have to constantly buy more health bots. He does have that Wriggles to try and get more sustainability. But Kog'Maw is doing very very well in this lane. They are still uh, quite even on CS but Double Lift is starting to pull ahead. When did Ezreal get beat up? <laughs> Must have been just recently. Oh uh, yeah, he, he Nocturne actually gave him the blue buff earlier on. Oh, that's so, so nice. He, he is doing a lot of damage to double lift right now. A nice chain of shield on the way back. Oh. Nocturne is coming down here into position. I'm not too sure he though. He does he's have his ult up, but double lift realizes he's a little bit overextended that there is a Nocturne in the game and does back up to recall. So uh, well, that actually the wish. lands the wish for uh, top. I guess. I don't know. No, <laughs> well, they're both at full health. I don't think they needed it up top. Yeah. Might have, I think it was for the Swain in mid, actually. Um, so while they're ganking top, a roll of dice does realize that they have a nice opportunity to get Dragon to make up for the gank. I don't know. The Wish went down, yeah, but at top, I don't know. Zidko is a little low. Well, Belter, however, not really, and Swain, not really either. Uh, so. Swain was uh, quite low in mid, earlier, just after the Wish, I believe. Okay. But Whatever, the wish went down, like nobody it. died, it's all good. <laughs> Free Dragon Hole, however, I mean, that puts you up a little bit in the gold. I'm still at zero, you should have 190 at this point, yep. and Free Dragons, but one dead Scion. I'm a little surprised they weren't able to push this uh, lane a little bit more. It looks like they're both going back right now. What's Galio going to be picking up? Swain does come bottom, but is spotted by the nice ward that RTD does have in the tri-bush. And they're just going to push bottom lane. Uh, of course, I mean, Scion actually teleports bottom to try and protect the last few hit points on this uh, tower. And they, yep. they are forced to w walk back. They can, in the meantime, dancing with uh, Galio up top. Galio just teleported up there as Scion teleported bottom. Jackie going to be taking some damage as Soraka goes down to this Ezreal ult. And now Jackie is going to be down here with double lift. Um, they have to really get back because that ward, that bush is warded. It looks like they're going to be trying to put some damage here onto the Ezreal. A Scion is coming up from behind, however. Double lift has no idea. He, he knows now for sure. And oh, he is going to blow up the shield just before he goes down. But the never move going out. And that is going to be one dead Scion. That did not work out for him whatsoever. As Sitko just babysits this mid lane. And the Galio pushes back to the top. That was not the best decision on Scion's part, of course, he thought he could pick up the Cogbomb, but unfortunately both Jaina, uh, Jana and Ezreal were almost entirely out of mana, so couldn't really do anything to assist him, and Swain CC just caught him dead in the water with no allies really around to do anything. Well, that puts the score now 6-4, to four. double lift actually, not going down as uh, Scion was trying to uh, put him, but 2-1 uh, for double uh, for double lift, and look at that CS, very impressive numbers for 16 minutes into the game, and some big items coming out, look at, oh wow, double lift with the recurve bow to come straight out of that with the longsword, so it's really going to look for that, make that magic as quick as he can. Right, the magic should be really, really nice against uh, the likes of Nocturne, of course, Squishy's like uh it won't be quite as good for Squishy's down bottom like Ezreal and Jaina, but it will be very, very helpful with just the super nice attack speed. Um I expect him to actually I have no idea what I expect him to do because <laughs> I'm going to not predict what double lift builds on after that wits end. It's a terrible idea to try to predict what pros are gonna do because they think just so much differently than you or I. Well, usually it's quite easy because they play very standard and they set the standards, so we know the standards. But I really didn't expect the wits end, so I'm not going to try calling him anymore. Uh, Ezreal getting seriously poked. He needs to do a little bit better of a job uh, juking that Kog'Maw. Bolt coming out. Trying to farm, I suppose, but uh, doesn't actually land anything except a whole bunch of free uh, 
creep kills for him, so that's actually pretty good for him. Scion up top, however, getting ulted there by the Galio. Sidco coming in with the stun and the Phoenix stance. That's going to be one dead Scion, and now they might be able to capitalize upon this with the next creep wave, take down some of this tower damage. But it does look like Sidco going to be running around. Yeah, he is going to come back up here, so the ping going down. Kennen is on his way to defend. He turned that revolver into a Will of the Ancients, something I learned yesterday. I did not know you could do that. But two on one under the tower. His AoE is really going to be what he's depending upon here, but Sidco is just like, I think there's a sure can come Double into my back. Double Lips just DPS down this tower. He gets poked in the face by uh, Ezra like four times, but you don't even notice because Soraka just teals him instantly. Big damage from Kennen up top. He is going to be able to repulse the push, if only for a little bit. 260 hit points left on that tower as Nocturne decided not to ult him, uh, which probably would have killed them both, actually. Uh, like, both have rolled the dice because they had just blown both ultimates, and now Scion is going to be coming back to babysit that lane a bit. I feel kind of bad for Zahn because bottom lane for uh, Curse has been doing so well that Uter has practically been camping up top. Scion has been, uh, they have attempted to gank Scion like four times now. They've succeeded uh, three out of those times it appear appears and he's just not having a good day. Uh, if he can get through that shield, I mean, it's not going to be doing anything except prolonging his death a little bit, and there'll be no return out of that. So, th if they can do that, or even stun him when the duration comes up, I mean, it's not going to pop, and it's going to really put him behind a little bit in those damage meters. But that's all right. Right now, six to five, they are still in the lead. Roll the dice with that dragon under their belt, as well as one extra kill. However, they are now going to be losing a second tower up top. Which means that uh, Global Gold will swing back into Curse's favor. Jane, I mean, in the meantime, does pick up that Oracle and starts to clean up the tons and tons of wards that uh, Curse had all around their jungle. They both teams have done a pretty good job of keeping map control, although Roll the Dice is a little behind. They've all of their wards are on their side of the jungle. Which is Man, Paul Belter is too fun. good. I'm watching him up against the Scion, and every time Scion pops that shield, he just pops it, no problem. He's just taking a lot of creep damage from it. I mean, look at him right now, throwing out that shield again. He has his ult popped, and Paul Belter is just kind of walking all over him. Look at that right there, getting him down. He's going to come into not the tower range because he did get stunned. Nocturne has been deciding what to do, although he's actually asking for help right now. He's like, Ezreal ult coming out. That's not really going to hurt him that much. He does have that Negatron cloak. That was a really nicely aimed Ezreal ult, however. I mean, it came all the way from the base, I believe. Swain in the meantime, doing, getting on Jano, but she does ult him away. I'm really surprised Nocturne did not want to help out Scion. It's a crazy Scion. fight. Dragon just swat, and they are fighting now. But Cogbot, bottom lane is coming up to help and might help clean up everything. Well, there's the Galio ult with the teleport. He's going to be able to take out Ezreal, except Ezreal does flash on out of that. Who else is going out? So Rock is still alive by the skin of her teeth, and it does look like Double Lift is able to take out the Nocturne. The Never, never Move is going to get juked by the Cannon, but Cannon, I don't think, can escape the long rangeness of this team, although I do say that he the Lightning Rush yeah. proves me wrong. He does juke Hogmod by just a tiny bit. That was not a good time to engage at Dragon. They were not aware that bottom lane was still there and would just come right up and make it a 4v3. So that is fairly poor position, especially when Jaina was separated from the group and her ult was already down from Swain. So that's an even Dragon count now, and Curse pre or RTD predicts the next one at 2650. We could see another epic fight there. Hopefully we will. I really like the Dragon fights. It feels so good to take down, you know, what, what was it, uh, two people on Roll the Dice, as well as a Green Dragon afterward. Well, you also gotta remember, I mean, Scion, after getting just walked upon as a rug up top from Galio, he wasn't actually in the fight as well either, and Galio with the teleport really did make that. A nice 5 on 3, so they were able to benefit from it. Surprised, however, they were not able to land a kill onto Ezreal. But that being said, Swain is going to be getting ganked here in the mid, a little bit of a counter kill. Ezreal is going to go out, but it will be missing it just by a little bit. And, wow! No. Yeah, oh, he finally good. does go down after all that life leech. Yeah, I was going to say, all the life leech is really keeping him up, but... Yeah, he went down. Top tower is about to go down. Galio is actually very overextended right now as Sion and Nocturne head up to uh, him. He must be feeling very confident. I mean, Popotoyer is a great player, but this is about to be a 3v1 gank. He'll have to do some crazy juking. Throws up the shield. He's good preparing himself He's for pain. He's actually probably going to get away with this. 
He's, I think he's yeah, a little no bit too tanky. Yeah, no one is in range tanky. to CC him at all, and he's taken almost no damage after overextending so far past the river. That's something you would never see, you know, a more casual player do. Well, except for the ones who have no map awareness. <laughs> oh yeah, except for those ones, yeah. Now, Pobelter is definitely ta uh, building a little bit tanky. I mean, the Merc treads with the Negatron Cloak and a Rod of Ages to just boost him up a little bit there so in the health. He's hoping to come back and gank Kennen right now, but... I think it's just warding. Yeah, he's just ah. going to ward. It's alright. Scion can't be feeling too good. I mean, he does have that blue buff from Swain. This, I believe, is from Swain. He still only has, really, the Sheen and Blasting Wand. His, what's his farm been doing? Scion, Scion, Scion. 163 farm, which is very good, but very behind Galio at 199. So I would expect him to have more items than that. Yeah, uh, particularly there we AP. go. He does pick up large rod. rod. It's a little late, though. It's like about six minutes late. <laughs> Really expected that from a solo lane uh, a little bit earlier than how he got it there. Clear points going down. We do find the jungle uh, being hit up by pretty much everyone. Nocturne in there. Nocturne has himself a catalyst. Going for a quick banshee, maybe. I believe that is what he's going for. Um, not entirely sure why. I guess it, it will be very easy for Cogmacher to remove a, remove a lot of people's banshees unless they just dance around constantly. <gasps> Speaking of Gogma, yeah, he does have that Madra, it's all done. Now he's been farming spectacularly at bottom with 206 CS, smashing everyone on the Roll the, Di Roll the Dice team. Double lift too good, man. Double lift too good. Look at Galio just throw out that wind, destroy these crates. It is going to be looking like a lot of pressure coming here into the mid. Ezreal is moving on up with his Brutalizer and Sheen. Going to be trying to uh, put out his best foot forward here for the defense. Scion still top, however. So it's not seem to be too concerned about this. But Curse has actually gone their separate ways now. Oh, the Ezreal ult almost getting the blue. So oh. close. I'm sorry I missed that. Like, my camera was on there and then I moved it just as the Ezreal ult came in the screen. He's like... One hit but it did not actually get the blue. His current no. blue is from the one that Nocturne gave him. Yep, yeah, Swain has uh, the curse blue. Do you remember the it's epic uh, steals yesterday of Baron and Dragon? It was pretty good. I love watching good. those. You can you can just really see the ex perfect timing, especially the blind steal of Baron uh, yesterday. Galio, they are aware that Galio is there. Uh, they have a ward, so they see TV. him now. But that CD is was just put down. Well, they suspected. I mean, he's like, where's he going? Nah, it's probably still around here. But lots of spam going off. The Ezreal again coming out. It is going to hit Soraka as well as double S. They are going to back off. 3v5, however. Like, even with the tower, it's very dangerous to be hovering here. Scion is just continue to try and free farm top. But I think they're going to head up to him right now. If he continues to do this, Galio is going to go up and stop him from uh, pushing down top tower. Well, Ezreal's free farm and bottom at this point, so they could have easily forced the issue into that mid. It does look like, however, it is going to be Roll the Dice putting the pressure here into mid. They actually have a pretty decent creep wave to go upon here, but Swain is going to be trying to make quick work of that. Catches the Kennet in a Kennet actually move. just sits in that snare. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's not going to do any damage to me. Whatever. Get Junkie. Yep, takes that tower. So I believe that's the first tower kill for Roll the Dice. How's your global gold sitting? 340 now. A lot yeah. more broke than the last game. The last game was also 50 minutes long. Yeah, it was pretty long. We're at 26 at this point. I'm at 490, which I believe is uh, the dragon and two towers, which actually adds up pretty nicely, because that's exactly what I had. Right. The next dragon should be coming up very soon, within the next uh, minute or so. Yeah, so I got they are going to set up for it. Curse here. is hoping to set up for starting to ward. Um, and with Scion up top, uh, roll the dice will have to really be aware to stop it. Uh, Jaina does have an oracle still, so she can't clean up the ward. But she doesn't. <laughs> but I don't think she's she aware of it. You know those are her wards, right? What? Jaina? Uh, not the one next to her, but the one in the uh, side bush. The one she's about oh. to kill. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Dragon should be popping fairly soon. There it is, 2650. It does come alive, but we do have Cyan up top trying to fake everyone out. He has that Rabidons. Looks like he's just going to continue pushing that because we do have all of the curse down here. The ward situation, uh, however. does not walk into that bush and does not see the ward. They see that one. 
But there goes Sitko, just chasing off everyone with a very manly growl. Well, with Scion all the way up growl. top still, though, and he mm -hmm. could teleport down here to one of these wards, but so far it's a 4v5 at Dragon, and they're trying to burst down Dragon. He does start engaging. Scion does the teleport, comes down. Ezreal does take a good amount of damage, but look at that kid all right there. Get Chunky does go down to all the first. Does it look like Swain is going to be biting the dust as well? Nocturne goes down, and look at that Galio picking up. That Slightly wow, late ult from Jaina. Was not able to save the sun. She's about to go down herself as Galio and Soraka both chase her down. She might get away. Soraka oh. flashes over to try and kill her, but she just barely makes it out. Look at that poke from Saving Ezreal. both oracles. That poke from Ezreal, man. Just too much for Soraka to handle. She is going to have to get back. It does look like the dragon went down. I have 680 gold, therefore I did get that dragon. And, uh, you know, that puts us up in the kill count here for Curse. 9 to 8. So we did lose Swain, but they are able to get Cannon and Cyan on nearly two more with that Soraka, or with that ezreal Janet combo. The healing from Soraka is really doing a ton in this game. Um, like, they're really not able to poke down Curse a lot, and when they do, on a single target, Soraka just lands a big nuke of a heal, even after the huge nerf to heals. Janna is going to clean up a ton of these wards right now, since there is no one to stop her this time. Uh, and they are going to give Ezreal another move. Yeah, it does look like he is going to set up for that. We do got a BF sword now labeled here onto the Ezreal. Uh, it does look like that Banshees have been finished up there on the Cheese Pirate. Should we help out a little bit with his sustain? And I think he's actually running a pot as well. Yeah, he's running both agility and fortitude pots on uh, you know, a 29 minute game. You don't really see pots typically until a little bit later. But he's got to be feeling really good. Rod of Ages and Azonias on the Swain. NY Jackie playing Swain uh, pr pretty well. I would say, and now he's just standing up, no problem to these t three here in the mid. He's not afraid of them whatsoever. It's weird seeing a game like of double lift playing against um, Ezreal because for some reason every time I see that Ezreal, I want to think it's Chouster. But unfortunately, he's not playing in this tournament. I love Chouster's Ezreal. It is so epic. Ooh. He tries to steal blue again, but doesn't quite get it. And so he picks up like it. the ninth blue. Yeah, they saw the CV yeah. down, they're like, oh, he's going to try to steal that. Not going to be working. Cheese Pirate, however, might find Sidco. Instead, we are going to have Janna Lots come over here. Lots of counter-warding wars right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Sion's teleport is down. He used it in that last fight, so he cannot actually get anywhere. And he is a little bit out of position, because we got Curse starting up this Baron right now. I'm pretty sure that Roll the Dice do know what's going on, as they do see all these wards. Sion finally coming they down. They now know what's going on, actually. I think... Uh, didn't have any wards in the area. That they could no there. steal. Does get the Baron for free, and Kenan does ult in with uh, the Baron. Oh, is ult. Like, <laughs> them all up nicely. Even double yeah. lift. The double lift does go down, but. The Ezra ult coming back out, but it doesn't look like Kogma did go down, but that's alright, they were able to take out a triple kill, well, a double kill for NY Jackie, but they were able to clean up both Kennen, Scion, as well as that Nocturne. Ezreal again getting out with the flash and his little dubstep that he can do. Well, Shunpo, dubstep, his little leap, whatever you want to call it. That was such a good fight for Curse Gaming. Took down Baron for free and then got to clean up three members of uh, Roll the Dice afterward. All the dice just had all of their wards taken down in the area. They should have suspected earlier, but didn't make it in time. I'm gonna call it dubstep from now on. Screw it. I think it's just a funny little pun. Ezreal, Ezreal, Ezreal. But yeah, good, very good fight there for Curse Gaming. They're gonna take the second tower. They're gonna push in here to the inhibitors. I'm not too sure if they're they're feeling really confident that they can take this one, but it does look like maybe they're gonna get rebuffed a little bit. We do not have any ults up except for Udyrs. But, uh, right, there's a Jaina <laughs> ult up on this side, but after the crazy battle uh, at Baron, they're all kind of waiting for their ults to come up. Yeah, Arcane Shift will now forever be known as Dubstep. <laughs> I f hereby decree it. No, they have at two wards at full health at the uh, blue buff in RTD's jungle right now. Fairly amused by that. Yeah, and they both have full duration too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. I Jan was walking in there and be like, oh, it must be my birthday. Except <laughs> she doesn't see it. Okay, fine. Blowing out candles on a cake. She puts out her own ward. <laughs> and the okay. ward still doesn't see this. That was a very strategically placed ward. That was that was a mind tricks ward. Holy crap. 
The entire point of that award was so that Jaina would think she'd already taken care of it. Brilliant! That's that's well, must that's what it must have been, obviously. You said Star Wars doesn't exist in League of Legends, but uh, yeah. After that fight, it does look like everyone's recouping a little bit. 12-9. Let's just go quickly a little bit over the items. I mean, lots of 200s there on the creep skill, uh, creep scores. That creep scores I'm for not the curse. Sure how I feel about Scion's positioning right now. I'm trying yeah, to like Scion, AP Scion is not the best backdoor hero. And he is getting his inhibitor tower pushed in right now as Kogma heads into the fight. Uh, his teleport oh, is up soon. Yep. Yeah. It's the key's doing it right now. He's gonna jump in here with no shield on. There it is, the shield going off. NY Jack is getting forced down a little bit. Bo Belter with the ultimate with his power range. That's gonna be the end of Ezreal. Or I'm gonna be a monkey's on Yeah, He does go down. Deer had to actually flash in. Probably not the best of ideas. He's gonna get focused down quite a bit. But oh my god, come on, Soraka. Soraka does, uh, he does shield, and he's gonna get hit the last second. Soraka double lift is the first one to go down in the fight, actually. But it was well worth it already. One for two. And Scion gets... Trying, they're trying. Come on, Pope Belcher, you can do it, dude. I believe in you. Oh, he misses that right there. The and the for double Scion. shield keeps him alive, but they do take the inhibitor tower. He misses again, Bull Belton trying to get this cannon, get Chunky, is trying to get Chunky with it, but he is going to go down as NY Jackie picked that up. So yeah, they were able to focus him down, the double lift, but a 3 for 1 with the tower and an inhib. Now they have made great use place. of this Baron. Going to go ahead and ward inside of RTD's base and see exactly what's going on. Nocturne is going to try to top in, but not really going to be able to finish anything. Swain just go ahead and, and flashes out of the base. Sitko, however, under fire yet again. Ezreal is going to go down. It looks like it didn't even hit anybody. Right Soraka's like heal is just doing too much because all of the team of Curse is super tanky. So every heal is compounded by all of their uh, mitigation stats. Funny because like everybody has no mana whatsoever except Sidco, but Sidco is still getting forced down a little bit. Bear stance coming out. He is going to get feared into the bush, and that is going to be one dead Udir right there. Cheesefire finally able to put him to rest. As now Pobelcher is going to be up here on the menu. Soraka coming back a little bit. Double lift as respawn coming back with the Scion kill, and now he's going to be laying the hurt onto these guys because they've just invested so much into killing that Udir. The and now this should be a spent, nice counter. Yeah, the entire team spent half of their mana trying to kill that Udir and like half of their cooldowns, and when he finally died. Curse was just back up alive and troll a little in their face because they had no more defensive or offensive cooldowns. Woo! Soraka too good. I mean, that, that Udyr survived, survived, and survived. That's, that's what he's really known for. But as soon as Doublelift came back into the fray, it's just like, good game, sir. I mean, look at that. He has himself a frozen mount with that Madrads. He's had a wit's end forever, and now on top of that, another BF sword. It's just ridiculous damage up coming out of double lift. Cannon is going to try to stop uh, Pobelter from taking top tower, of course. Galio doesn't do the best damage to towers, so he is going to be able to. In the meantime, Curse picks up another dragon that makes their sec third dragon this game, I believe? Mm, at least their second, if not the third. I'm at 1620 global gold, but I do have an inhibitor as well as a whole bunch of towers under my belt. Uh, do you have a counter for Baron? I actually don't remember exactly what I put down. But they might be nope. going for another Baron in a couple of minutes. Um, it is about time since their Baron expired. And if Roll the Dice doesn't win the next Baron, it's pretty much GG. Well, they are they are uh, down 17-11 over Curse. And uh, Curse, you know, very, it transitioned very well here into the mid, and now we're going to be transitioning again into the late. So, in terms of items, I mean, right now, after that Banshee's Veil, Cheese Pirate has been trying to build something with his recurve bow and Negatron clubs, maybe his own wits end to try to match that of Kogma, but it's just been slow going so far. Pobelter has finished up his first card to go with that force of nature, and again, even more magic is coming out there. He's running 216 magic armor at this point. It does look like everyone is trying to gather up for the Baron, but Baron has yet to pop as Udyr with his own wit's end and frozen heart is trying to chase him down. Swain will be taking some damage, gets that never move there onto the trick as he's going to be moving off. And Ezreal throwing out his, all his spam, including his ultimate. Now, get Chunky is going to get hit by the Full Belcher ultimate. That's going to be one dead little Yordle. As now Curse is going to be moving Nocturne. in for the kill. Yeah, in the meantime, Nocturne is completely zoned out from the fight. And Curse just sitting in the uh, RTD base. 
it was possibly probably gonna take down one of their next towers at the very least because they are down one. Zion coming back into the fray is gonna stun Sitko, who has his turtle stance up. Cheese part trying to do something here to double lift. It's just not gonna work. The tower goes down and now they are within retreat, and that is not a good sign if you're retreating within your own base. I just hit level four, 1770, global gold, and it does look like Curse Gaming will be moving on here to the semifinals of the Dawn of Champions. I like the Cyber billion Cyber. wards he just dropped. This is like the manor nexus in StarCraft 2. No, he said he's gonna drop half a dozen wards as a victory celebration. And the Kog'Maw dance, Indeed. it's so cute. It's so cute. Butterfly Kog'Maw, OP man. OP. That was so very victory! Well I don't think my team have lost yet. <laughs> I was on the Why Chinese you team. Were you? Did they win? Yeah, they won. Mm -hmm. You're right. Fun times. Yeah, alright, so Curse is going to be moving on over Roll the Dice. Sorry to Curse for all the confusion a little bit earlier, and uh, sorry to the stream for uh, announcing, you know, 